Sing, I will be your host this evening. Uh, don't let the beard fool you. I'm only a freshman at UC Davis. Um, well, again, I'd like to welcome you all to the sixth annual Unity Dinner. One reminded us of the heartland and the other the homeland. I welcome you to the ISEF Unity Dinner 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ashok Kumar and I've been on the board of ISEF for two years. Is, is everybody able to hear me back there? Over here? Good, maybe we need a little bit more volume, please.
started off with a focus on immigrant Indians, but soon expanded its ambition. The effort is not a revolution at all. It's just a small step of the work we do, the work that's around us all the time. The effort now transcends cultures. It recognizes the diversity and brings us all together in the celebration of unity the very essence and the strength of this great nation we call our homeland, America. Thanks to the help and support of all members of the community, we continue to improve our community relationship and our representation, be it on the school boards, the hospital boards, city councils, or planning commissions. Some of these representatives serving our community are present here and maybe we'll even hear from some of them later in the evening. I want to take this opportunity to inform you about another organization called the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, GOPIO for short. That was founded in New York in 1989. The emphasis of the organization was to address the cause of human rights of Indians living abroad. Towards this goal last year, Jeevan Zutsi also founded the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of GOPIO, for which I am the vice president. Let me introduce the rest of his boards to you. Of course, President Jeevan Zutsi, Secretary Shashi Sharma, and Treasurer Sukumar. Gopio has recently been also accredited by the UN as a non-government organization and has been invited to participate in the World Conference Against Racism. Let me share this evening's program we have put together for you. First of all, we had, we saw the great performance by the Kenyan band. Yeah. Next, we will have the keynote address by our Lieutenant Governor, John Garamendi, our keynote speaker. It will be followed by an award ceremony recognizing the valuable contribution of our community leaders and our sponsors. Later, we will hear from Dr. Treadway, the president of Aloni College, a video looking into the future. We also have Ms. Nina Moore, trustee Fremont Unified School District who would speak on the topic of how schools can help build hate-free community. A very important topic especially for those of us with school-going loved ones. Alongside we also have cultural series of events and performances by Chinese, Mexican and Indian Bhangra dances to help us celebrate this Unity Dinner 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Without further ado, sit back and enjoy. And let me welcome Jeevan Jutsi. Uh, moving along with tonight's events, I'd like to call up uh, Rahul Jutsi to the stage, please. Rahul. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. It's an honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker today. Let me start off by thanking you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend this important event celebrating unity and diversity, for choosing to be part of the solution instead of turning a blind eye to the issues facing our greater community, please give yourself a round of applause. I last introduced our next guest at my parents' home in Fremont when he was insurance commissioner and appropriately referred him to the podium as our future lieutenant governor. It sure wasn't a difficult prediction to make at the time, considering the man has been successful throughout his career at bringing divergent interests together to solve problems. This has been evident in his two terms as insurance commissioner, where he negotiated with insurance companies and pushed them hard for ratepayer relief. It's no wonder why he's so fitting to be a keynote speaker for this event celebrating unity and diversity. And it sure isn't a secret that the act that the man acts divisively. For example, he issued new rules in July that forced insurers to stop using zip codes as primary influences when calculating auto premiums. 
a practice that had harmed safe drivers living in unsafe areas. I am now proud to be introducing him again, deservingly, as our lieutenant. All said and done, the man's got a thoughtful plan using the lieutenant governor's seat on the University of California Board of Regents and California State University Board of Trustees to require more accountability and transparency. He wants to ensure that the state university system is producing the best teachers it can and that research facilities are supported properly for the needs of the 21st century economy. Many of you may not be aware, but considering the Bay Area is the world's premier locale for green technology, it's noteworthy that this man wrote one of the state's first solar, wind, and energy tax credit, credit bills back in 1978. It's also no, that, no secret that he will, be, he will use the Lieutenant Governor's office to advance environmental issues such as preserving and enhancing the Sacra Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta. And with his insurance background, he's also willing to tackle the challenge of health care. This gentleman is going to bring labor, business, and government together to try to find solutions to the spiraling costs. For those of you who don't already know his role in of office, he is the president of the Senate and casts a tie-breaking vote in the state if the state legislature is locked in a tie. He's also second in command in the executive branch, acting as our governor when the terminator is out of state promoting his latest flick. I have no doubt by the end of his four-year term, there isn't going to be one, any one of you who that doesn't know what his position does. A one-time academic All-American football player and champion wrestler, there isn't a better man in California that I can think of who will stand up to Arnold and demand a better California. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our Lieutenant Governor, John Garamendi. Thank you. That was a very, very kind introduction. What a pleasure to be back for the fifth time to join you at this Unity Dinner. Jervon, thank you for uh, your leadership in putting all of this together. Are we having a good time tonight? Yeah. You bet we are. Mm, I think you're underplaying it. I think you're actually enjoying it a little bit more than that. I was listening to the music as, as I came in, and I was watching more than a few of you out here dancing. I suspect you're going to get back to that as the program goes on and as you finish honoring several outstanding individuals. Uh, you're going to have that portion of the program a little later, so I don't want to present the envelopes for the winners any earlier than, uh, than that part of the program. But what I would like to do is to share with you just a few thoughts. And my thoughts really turn to those of you in this room. Uh, it is always difficult to be the most recent immigrant to an area. Now, many in this room have been third, fourth generation here in California or in America, but also in this room are first generation immigrants. And my grandparents and most every other person in the United States and their families have experienced that first generation. And often as we go into this period where we have these discussions about what the immigration policy of America could or should be, we forget the incredible power that immigrants bring to this nation. We forget the incredible importance that they have played throughout the history of America, and we forget the incredible importance that the most recent immigrants have brought to California. Every, nearly every immigrant is a self-selected achiever. They themselves want to do better, and they work hard, they study hard, and they never give up in their quest to do better for themselves and for their family. That is incredible strength, incredible power, ingenuity, intelligence, entrepreneurship that's brought to our country. And in this room and in this unity dinner, you are celebrating that strength. You are celebrating that power. You are celebrating your future and the future of the broad community of California. And that is one very, very good thing. And you are to be congratulated for that. Now, 
there are things that you can do by yourself. There are things that you can do as a family. You can build your business, and you may very well succeed at it. But there are also things that can only be done as a community. And in this room is incredible potential for building a better California community. And there are some keys that we have used in California for many, many years. And those keys have never been lost, although sometimes they've been put in the drawer along with all of the other things that we store in the... Well, you've got one of those junk drawers in your home, don't you? You know, you toss your keys in there and maybe several months later you find them. But the keys for California's success have to be pulled out and used once again. And the most important key of all is the key of education. That key, when we use it, unlocks the future greatness of California and, just as important, the future greatness of individuals in this state. We were chatting earlier, Mr. Singh, your MC, an example of the key of education being used to unlock a future. A freshman at UC Davis, right? High school graduate at Merced, and now MC before all of you. Already you're on your way to a political career. Don't be in a hurry. I don't want you pushing me off the stage right now. But the key to education was handed to this young man. As every young man is no, and our responsibility as the generation of parents, and in my case, grandparents, is to make sure that that key to educational success is available and in the hands of every California child as they grow up. We have to do this, and we can do this. We know how to do it. We've done it before. We can use the incredible technology of this great valley, of the Bay Area, of our universities, and apply that technology in the classroom. We can break apart and put aside the stifling suffocation of all of the old rules because what we did yesterday may not apply in the future. We need to free up the education system so that it can address the needs and the systems of pedagogy that we must use in the future. Technology, new knowledge, new information, new ways to impart it. I was over at NUMI today and they were talking about the need to educate, to train and to bring into their plan carpenters, plumbers, electricians, men and women who have basic skills. And we have this is our responsibility. This is our duty as adults to make certain that the education system, the key to the future success of this state, is available to every young man, like Mr. Singh, and every young woman who needs that education. Are we prepared to make that investment? Some would call it an expense, but it is really just an investment that we must and can make. I know that in this room, there are many different cultures who come from many parts of the world. But I also know in this room that every single culture has an education culture. That you have a desire to see your kids have the best education. We must invest so that that is passed on to the next generation. These issues are before us today. The key is still in that drawer along with all the pencils and papers and all of the odds and ends that we didn't know what to do with, we've got to pull that key out of the drawer and we must use it to unlock the future for those two young children right over there. And for you, Mr. Singh, the question is us. Are we willing to make that investment? Are we willing to force the change upon the system that's necessary to free up the energy and the motivation 
and the knowledge that is out there. We simply must do it. It is the fundamental and most important of all of the national security issues. Yes, there's war, yes, there's terrorism, and yes, those are national security issues. But among those that are also national security issues is the fundamental issue of educating the next generation. We can do it. We will make the investments. We will change the laws. We will free up this system so that it can change and so that it can address the needs of the generations that are in school today and the generations that are yet to come. In this Unity Dinner tonight, you are celebrating the incredible diversity and strength that come from the cultures of the world. We're all together in California. And as we celebrate that diversity, as we celebrate the unity that we can have, we also recognize that we have responsibilities. The education of our children is the foremost of those responsibilities. I thank you so very much for the opportunity to be with you. I celebrate this evening of unity with you, and I celebrate the incredible, beautiful cultures that are presented in this room and are in our Golden State, California. Thank you so very, very much. What a great way to start off the night. Um, it is with great pleasure that I do introduce this next man. Um, I had the a whole lot better than I do. Uh, president of IACF, Mr. Shashi Sharma. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and the distinguished guest of this evening. On behalf of Indo-American Community Federation, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Your presence is the crown of this event. I would like to start with a quote from Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, who once said, you must be the change you wish to see in this world. I think that these simple words translate into a very powerful message, which is the essence of tonight's gathering. This sixth annual Unity Dinner provides us with the opportunity to come together cross-culturally as a united front to make a difference. I'm honored to be the part of an organization that believes in these ideas. Indo-American Community Federation was first founded by Mr. Jeevan Jutshi, who is an honest, hardworking, and selfless community leader. This organization is a product of his creative vision in which he wished to bring all the communities together to build a better understanding amongst them. It is Mr. Jeevan's devotion and love for his fellow men that has made ISCF the success it is today. He has set up the standards high and I hope we can live up to them. With that, I would like to talk about what the future holds for ISCF. The largest barrier among the different cultures is lack of communication Thus, the purpose of this organization becomes to diminish these barriers. We want to bring all the cultures together and create an environment where we can all better understand each other and build strong ties. So let lead the world, as Gandhi said, by creating the change we want to see in it. And I invite you to do so in our future events. I want to thank you all for being here tonight and can't wait to see you at our next event. You guys have been great and enjoy the rest of your evening. With this, I would like to invite Mr. Jeevan Joshi to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big round of applause. Jeevan Joshi. Good evening. Honorable Governor had to, Lieutenant Governor had to leave early. So we had to change the program a little bit. But I think we have doing fine, he just had to leave. Uh, we have uh, Honorable State Senator here, Ellen Corbett. I would like to request her to please join us. Thank you very much, Jeevan, and good evening, everyone. How is everybody doing? 
everybody having a wonderful time. I'm very happy to be here again this evening. This is always such a very, very wonderful celebration of unity and just the beautiful rainbow of culture and tradition and family uh, that this part of the state represents. You know, state senators, when they go off to Sacramento, they like to brag about their district and what their district represents and what is special about their district. And I always have the honor of talking about what a wonderfully diverse community that I have, how strong our economy is, how hard people work to make sure that we have funding for education, how important the environment is to our community. And it all comes about because of the unity of our community, of people pulling together from all different backgrounds, people actually whose family and who they themselves have come from all around the world with wonderful talents, many of which we, were go we are going to honor tonight. Tonight we are here to honor people in medicine and in business and education um, and uh, our citizen of the year who's been keeping us safe overseas as well. And so tonight is just a very, very special time and it's in our community is a very special place. I think sometimes we start to take that for granted. But just look around the room and look at the people sitting next to you on both sides and just sort of think a little bit about uh, the history and the culture that is represented in this very room. I also want to say um, what a special place this is where you can take a look at the agenda and notice the type of entertainment we're going to have this evening. You would have to travel around the world several times to see this sort of entertainment, but we have it here available to us right here in our Alameda County here in Fremont. So let me just close by saying I am so very proud to represent the people of this community because this really is a very special microcosm of what the United States is all about, what about what freedom is about, what um, the American dream is about, and what one of our most one of our very important mottos is: uh, "E pluribus unum." It's so important we put it on our money, but "E pluribus unum." Uh, from many comes one, and that's part. That's a very big part of what this evening is all about. So I'm very honored to represent you in Sacramento. We have a lot of important work to do together this year to deal with important issues, especially things like healthcare for all, um, a cleaner and stronger environment, dealing with infrastructure issues, and of course a very, very important, what John Garamendi already spoke about, ensuring we have the support we need to continue to have a very strong education system here in California, which gives everybody the opportunity to succeed. So thank you for inviting me here this evening. Thanks so much, Giovan, and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And go out and make a difference tomorrow. Thank you very much.